welcome to season three, episode six of the 57th taping of the infamous Todd show. Today, I want us all to get back to laughing again. Are you surrounded by people that are so hilarious to watch that if they knew what you thought about them, they'd probably stop talking about you? My entire life, Everyone told me I lacked filters. They said I didn't think before I opened my mouth, but they were wrong. I always thought through the comments I spit out. The problem is not thinking it through, but the opposite. I thought it through, but my mind decided either to be truthful and share the comment or found the comment so funny that it needed to be shared. How many times do you look at some photo someone posts on social media and think when you look at their food oh my god it looks like vomit <laughs> that's me i promise it was funny and i always posted <laughs> posted comments like that until i asked mother swanson <laughs> on a food dish that she had posted on social media and believe me she was not amused i heard her feelings which made me feel bad and and I apologized for my comment. It didn't stop me from saying it out loud. It just taught me not to say it now to mom. <laughs> I adore my mothers. Pissing them off and hurting their feelings should not be part of my game plan. Now, if you're one of the 10,000 people listening to this show, I want to include you in future shows by asking you to give me permission to stalk you on Facebook. My show is also on every other social platform, but honestly, I don't know how to use any of them. My agents distribute this show around the world. My job is just to share my silly stories of what I see in my life or in the future in your life. Not your heartbreaking stories. Those I will let you keep between your family and your friends. This is what I need you to do. And don't worry, I'm not gonna repeat this every single time I do a show. So just bear with me. Simply search for the infamous Todd show and then like it on Facebook. Or, or you can subscribe to it for free on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in The Infamous Todd Show, and hit the subscribe button. On the top of each page, you will need to like or subscribe to it before you scroll down, and you'll see a block of me asking permission to share you with, with the world. I know the Facebook page alone now has 4,500 people, but only a, a dozen people so far have given me um, any uh, permission to do this and nobody has done it yet on, on YouTube. I would say the new accounts on Tumblr, LinkedIn, Instagram, Reddit, and all those sites, I, I, I'd have you posted on there, but you, honestly, I don't know how to use all of them. And it's with, it becomes more and more complicated each day even to do what I'm already doing. At la in fact, at last count, <laughs> Twitter, my, my Twitter account for the infamous Todd show only has my cousin Susan <laughs> following it. There's only one person. And if you're one of the 10,000 people listening to the show through uh, the podcast, iTunes, Google, some smart device, or whatever you use, I guess you'll need to track the show down on Facebook or YouTube. But it'll be worth it to realize your silliness is shared by other people. You can go back to listening to it. <laughs> you don't have to watch it, continue watching it on Facebook. I've seen my face. It's best shared on the radio. And by the way, that, that scratch on my face is a scratch. <laughs> I don't need people posting that I have a booger on my eyebrow or something like that. I warn you though, the things I find funny in you, you may not find silly in yourself. So be gentle. Be like Mom Swanson. Let me know when I went over the line with you and your story so I won't repeat it. I can't erase the show. 
but I can change my behavior towards you. So while I wait for all of you to grant me permission to use your first names, let's today's show, let's talk about cars. And this will give an example of how I'm going to use your stories. Are you one of those people that bestow personalities on your vehicle? Growing up, Mother Kaczynski always said her car, she always named her cars and her vans. Now, I'm not talking about a passive name. My mom would talk to these cars, have entire conversations with these cars. Some of them truly became part of the family. To tell you the truth, sometimes I think my mom liked her vehicles much more than she liked me. Mom's car didn't sass her. It did not lie, fight, shoplift, whine, or hassle her. The car did not scream, Mom, Todd's picking on me. Mom, make Todd shut up. <laughs> Compared to me, the car was cheap. It asked for less attention and usually always gave my mom what she asked from it. From her, as in from her uh, as in Betsy or whatever. I don't remember my mom ever having uh, <laughs> any of the cars with male names. I could be wrong. I don't think I ever, I don't think I've ever had that kind of bond with the car. D do you? <laughs> Did you? If you're watching this through social media or YouTube, share your story with me. My first cars were superficial. They got me around. I never had a desire to own a particular brand or model. I never had a poster on my wall of some fantasy car that I wanted when I grew up. If it moved forward, I was, I was happy. <laughs> the only rule I had was it had to be an American car. After all, it was the 70s. Father Kaczynski had worked for General Motors. My grandfather's worked for General Motors. And I was a kid from Michigan. My cars didn't have a personality, but it did become an extension of me. My first Pontiac got me to work. It was a piece of crap. Uh, my Oldsmobile station wagon brought my friend Clyde and I back and forth across the state to create all kinds of crazy stories that I'll share in the future and allowed me to have girlfriends and to date in high school. My VW Bug, which I hated with a passion because I, I don't know, how, I didn't know how to drive a stick shift in high school. I couldn't drive it if my life depended on it. Uh, my poor friend Scott and I would be driving around town with me grinding gears, burning out belts, never realizing we were making funny stories for future memories. Think about it. Think about most of your memories. When you were creating them, you didn't have the slightest idea that those would be the moments you would think back later in life. It was not until my friend Kenny went into the military did I have access to a car reflective of my own silliness. You see, right before he left, he bought this bright yellow pacer. It looked like a, a moon buggy, a, a hamster looking pudgy fishbowl of a car. Well, Kenny let me use his car for several months before I went off to basic training for my 18th birthday. To this day, I never had as much fun as I had with that damn car. I lived, I lived in an apartment long torn down in Clearwater on Fort Harrison where it merged with Myrtle Avenue. And <laughs> I had this nosy landlord that watched everything I did. She was obsessed with staring at me. She made no effort to look away if I, I looked over at her. So to mess with her, I'd go over to my grandparents' house. Next to their home on South Corona Avenue was a McDonald's on the corner of Golf to Bay and a business between the McDonald's and my grandparents' house called the House of Make Believe. Now, the House of Make Believe rented costumes for school plays, Halloween, you know, that type of place. Well... They still, they're still in the business, but they outgrew that location like 40 years ago. 
So I had rent these outfits, <laughs> knowing the apartment manager would be sitting in her leasing office, which was also her home in this triangle-shaped tower, and <laughs> watching every detail of my life. I'd come home dressed as a duck, <laughs> once as a gladiator, a Roman gladiator. And just to mess with her, on 4th of July, I came home dressed as a cat. For the record, I wanted to dress as Dorothy for The Wizard of Oz, but I did not. After all, I was straight. Only a gay man would wear a dress as a woman, <laughs> as a, as a woman in the summer. Well, <laughs> that and women. Uh, my crossover to using the car as an extension of my personality began at this, <laughs> this dilapidated green building. On that day, I dressed as Willy Wonka from the Chocolate Factory, and I placed these balloons on inside of uh, Kenny's pacer with a magnetic sign I had made for each side of the car that said Willy Wonka's Everlasting Gobstoppers, five cents. It was the first time I saw the landlady leave her apartment, and when she thought I wasn't looking, she removed one of those old Kodak Instamatic cameras and took a picture of Kenny's decorated car. Now, within an hour, other people were stopping by and checking it out. After two hours, I couldn't take it anymore, so I got back in the pacer and I started driving around Clearwater Beach still wearing my 1971 G Gene Wilder version of Willy Wonka, purposely catching the attention of, of strangers. Now, if you know me in person, you could understand my excitement. I love, I adore, I crave, I beg for people to smile. Smiles absolutely rock me. They rock my world. No matter how sick I am in bed, no matter how much pain I am, Laura, Darlene, and all the nurses that watched over me will tell you, I will still find a way to make you laugh, to make you smile. I honestly believe it feeds my spirit. So the funniest story I have of this yellow pacer sedan came from the day I created these 12-inch wings that I connected to the side door and a three-foot three white propeller I hooked to the front grill of the car. I bought a, a long red flowing scarf, uh, <laughs> a pair of... Uh, uh, a brown leather aviator cap with a chin buckle and a pair of vintage aviator goggles that, you know, the kind that you'd often see on motorcycle riders from the Second World War. The entire weekend, I'd go out after work and I'd drive all over Tampa Bay in this outfit looking like a yellow version of the Red Baron. Florida tourists were going bananas watching me, taking pictures, photos that I'm sure they lost years ago. But for that moment, they laughed. They, they talked about me with a smile. Later, when they developed those pictures, when they returned home, I envisioned that they laughed again. Well, anyway, well, anyway, eventually, Kenny came home from a stint in Turkey. And for some reason, he brought this crap he brought back this crappy van uh, that they delivered to a port in new jersey well kenny asked me to fly up to help him drive the van back to florida and what he didn't realize is during the trip the serpentine belt busted and we couldn't use the headlights so here we are these two goofy young men going down the road with the, the road meaning the highway the expressway with flashlights hanging out the window trained on the white line of the shoulder and the highway not a drop of moonlight i think every friend that ever drove with me has a story of us breaking down and hilariously trying to get the vehicle going again. 
from a car sliding off <laughs> to the edge of a cliff on Foster Road to driving across the causeway during Hurricane Elena. And by the time we got halfway across, the road vanished underwater, forcing my friend to tie himself to the top of the hood in the howling wind to find the center line so we wouldn't vanish to our death in the middle of Tampa Bay. <laughs> now, if you don't have funny stories about your car, then you have the wrong car. For me, this is my life goal. I need funny stories about my cars, my family, my friends, my pets, my jobs, the places I called home, even my enemies help me create funny stories. I promise, my enemies hate me more than I could ever hate them. Don't get me wrong, I usually understand their disgust with me. Most of them don't hate me because I personally did something against them. They hate me because I'm obnoxious. They're right, I, I am obnoxious. They hate me because someone repeated some stupid made up rumor as a fact. You know what, unless I talk about one of the bad things I did in my books and, and novels, I doubt the rumor was true. I confessed the crimes of my life in my plays and writings. If I had done more, I, <laughs> I would have used it as resource material. After all, not many people get to say they spilled their secrets <laughs> for $20 a book per person in perpetuity. Okay, not 20 bucks anymore, 10 bucks. $2.50 in digital format. <laughs> Cars can be fun. It doesn't take a lot of money to have fun with your car. For almost a decade, I drove a little Mazda Miata. <laughs> What's funny about that? I weighed 300 pounds. I looked like a cartoon character from Looney Tunes. I would haul tons of crap all over Phoenix in that skateboard of a car. Ask my friends, I once placed a double door soda cooler on it to haul across Clearwater, Florida. You know, the fridges that stores have at the end of the counter trying to sell you a cold soda pop. But this one had a double door on both sides sitting on top of my Mazda Miata driven by a 300 pound man with yellow hair because he bought his hair color at the Dollar Tree. Kmart and Phoenix once had a sale on a four top table with four chairs for $69. The box was a beast. My friend Jimmy and I went over to Kmart and Phoenix and bought 10 cases as in 10 four top wooden tables with metal bases, 40 chairs, and stacked them one on top of the other <laughs> until it was 12 feet in the air. The tires on this Mazda Miata were almost flat. <laughs> then me, at 300 pounds, got in the driver's seat. Jimmy, who probably weighed 80 pounds, <laughs> got inside the, the passenger seat. And Jimmy and I rolling down the road <laughs> to one of my restaurants to, to swap out the tables with this big mountain above us. Jimmy was hilarious. His long, lanky arms outstretched, holding up perhaps 700 pounds, 12 feet of mass, as if he could prevent it from, from us being crushed to death if it fell our way. All my vehicles began to have story. What were the story? What were your vehicle stories of your life? You know you had some. I remember breaking up with someone when I moved from Arizona back to Florida in 2009. My friend Jesse and I bought this fake arm and hand from the 99 cent store. You know, the type that they use for Halloween as a prop. I placed it out of the trunk of the car and then I went over to the Home Depot and got a large sticker made for above the hand. 
and it said the infamous Todd has changed his Facebook status to single. The entire trip was perfect. People would be driving by and they'd see that arm and the sticker and they'd pass me by laughing and giving me a thumbs up. It was pretty funny until I pulled into a Chevron gas station off Interstate 10 in Louisiana. Suddenly a white Ford Tempo pulled up next to me and got gas. A young lady stepped out of her car, a slight grin on her face as she approached me. And she said, she said, do you see that elderly, do you see my elderly grandmother in the car? And I looked over and there sat this five foot tall, fragile old lady staring at me in complete terror. Can you open your trunk and show my grandmother the joke, she continued. <laughs> the, the wind is whipping behind your car, forcing the stuffed arm to bounce around. My grandmother is freaked out. She thinks you have your wife in the trunk of your Mazda Miata. <laughs> if your car does not give you joy, I'm telling you, buy another car. Or at least change how you think about your transportation. You don't have to be mean like me. At Christmas, I put I used to put a plastic lawn reindeer upside down on top of my Jeep and, and a sign that said, Rudolph will not be guiding the, the sleigh this year. Through Easter, I had a stuffed rabbit, a basket, and plastic eggs twisted in the grill of my vehicle held in place by wire <laughs> as if I'd run the Easter Bunny Rabbit. In both occasions, let's just say the kids screamed and parents were pissed. I laughed my butt off. Eh, I guess not all my jokes created smiles. <laughs> to be fair, neither do all my shows. <laughs> so, so starting today, I'm going to lean heavily on all of you to find humor. Go online and give me permission for future shows. When my heart damage got bad, they were worried about me driving. Once I di was diagnosed with onset dementia, my driving privileges vanished. So now I'm going to rely on making fun of all of you. Believe me, I've been paying attention and some of you are a mess. Just like me. I love it. And believe me, you are hilarious. Hilarious. Watch future shows as I post them on Sunday mornings. They're, good, they're available 24 7 around the world. Feel good knowing your story will, will help people laugh, smile. And perhaps even feel better about themselves. Nothing like social media to show <laughs> what a mess people are in your life and that you're not as bad as that you think you are, that you just fit in the pack. But in the meantime, I'm hoping that you're going to come back next Sunday. And I'm, I just hope you make it a great day. And I hope I made you smile somewhere along the line. I am the infamous Todd, and this was the 57th episode of the infamous Todd show. Bye.